Well, today or, or t t this evening, um, I will take you um, with me into the world of Xerti and how you can create uh, learn um, escape rooms with Xerti. Uh, I will explain a bit about Xerti when we are further in the uh, in the presentation. I have to excuse myself for uh, my English. Uh, if you don't understand what I'm saying, please ask in the chat and then I will try it in another way. Uh, sometimes it can be a bit Dutchy English. Uh, also, the examples that I, ha uh, I have a lot of examples today, um, are some of them are in Dutch, but it's more that you see the principles behind it than that you can uh, do the room itself. Um, so we are going to create our own digital escape room today. We have an hour, that's not a lot of time, but I hope I can give you some of the uh, things to start with. And um, before we start, I was wondering, and you can put it in the chat, if you have access to a Xerti installation or that you use in your uh, organization, please put that in the chat. So there were a lot of no's. Okay, uh, Adeline, you get some help with it. Okay, yeah. So uh, basically, we're all beginners in Xerti. Um, I will um, uh, tell you a bit first about escape rooms and show you some examples. And then the second half of this pre presentation, we're going to create one ourselves. Um, because you're all beginners, uh, maybe you don't get re uh, the, the result you want at immediately, but then you have an idea how it works. Um, and if you have any questions, put them in the chat. So what are we going to do today? Uh, a bit of a background around uh, escape rooms. Most of that you heard already today, but uh, uh, we'll go, go into that later. What thirty? some examples, uh, and then, phew, how do you do that? Um, and then we get taking a look behind the scenes in thirty itself. And if you have any questions, then we, you can ask them in between or at the end. Uh, by the way, this is also Xerti, what you see. The, so the slides you see is a Xerti object. It's um, uh, an object where you can add pages into. Um, and uh, we have seven different pages you can use. And uh, in fact, you can all use them creating an escape room. So um, for Xerti, it's not that Xerti is very difficult. But the difficulty is that you have so many choices. We will come to that back later. Uh, a bit of a background. Um, escape rooms are um, yeah, founded in, uh, for the first time in 2007 in Japan. And later it came to, uh, to Europe and it's spreading fast. Almost every city has multiple escape rooms, physical escape rooms. And there are also television programs. I don't know if they are uh, familiar in your count country, but uh, Fort Bayard or Prison Island. Um, don't know if you hear from it. Yes, <laughs> Aisha. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I really think they are fun to look at, the, that you see teams that try to escape from a prison or a fort or a, a whatever, um, and do all kinds of um, uh, assignments. Uh, trying to get out. And I thought, oh, this is really useful to use online um, also because there are physical escape rooms, but you can easily create an online version as well. And that can be big or small or uh, around um, a new topic, around um, students that new are on school, around a specific topic that needs a bit more playing and showing around to, to uh, inform your students. Um, so this is a bit of background, um, and then um, for the ones uh, who use 
for creating escape rooms at the moment. Um, can you please add in the chat uh, which tool you used? Because I know it was not 30. Ah, Crystal Maze was also a, a, a television show. <laughs> OneNote, PowerPoint, Qu Qualtrics, I don't know, but Telescape. So as you can see, there are a lot of different programs you can use uh, to create escape groups. Um, and um, is them. So thank you for all the information in the chat. Um, so what 30? 30 is a, an authoring tool where you can create interactive, um, accessible, um, multimedia uh, kind of um, learning objects. And it could be a small website or that could be uh, a, a, the one that I'm showing now with pages behind each other. You can do it linear you can put them linear so you go from one to the other or you can do it historic you can go through the whole escape room uh, that's all um, um, uh, configurations that you can create when you make your escape room um, after that uh, you can easily use the link in your learning environment, send it to the students, use it in Teams, but you can also create a SCORM package. You can use LTI. Um, there are a lot of different ways to um, share it with your students and even get results back into your learning environment. For example, if you use SCORM or LTI, uh, you can get the, learning, uh, the, the results also back into your learning environment. Um, if you want, uh, I will give you this, uh, the link to this session as well, so you can look at this afterwards, so you don't have to take all the notes. Um, I have a few examples from escape rooms, and the first one is one, um, th this is called On The Market, and we are working on that um, by, uh, with the VRT, that's the Flemish um, Broadcast uh, Organization, and a school of secondary education, and they got a grant to develop um, a learning um, or, or an escape room around going to the market and uh, buy a phone. And um, this example is not ready yet, so I can't give you the link, but I can show you what we've done because this is also created with AI. What we did was, um, ask uh, ChatGPT for a sort of a script or ideas and then build further on that. Um, then we asked another AI tool um, to create uh, 360 images that we can use. Um, we also used a lot of audio with a very famous Flemish um, uh, DJ um, uh, that uh, adds his voice to it and the, that immediately make the the escape room much more professional if you hear this, those um, audios. Um, I'm going to show you the one, let me see, it's not this one, it's this one. Uh, so this is the uh, escape room, you get some information but it's in Dutch. What I'm going to do now is uh, use the translation in my, uh, in my browser to put it on English so you can see it a lot, but this is Google Translated. Um, this first, yeah, there are a lot of um, places where I can go and can click on. For example, this building, then I get some uh, info information. This is the sofa. Maybe you can could go here soon. Or this is the bakery. I have to visit them later, so I have to find out on this image where I can, uh, where I have to go to. Uh, in this case, I know, and I also have the audio added here, so it's not only that I can read it, but I can also listen to it. And that's very impos uh, important for the accessibility, also for students that don't read that well, they can also hear everything. Uh, I'm going to show you a 
let you hear a small example, but it's in Flemish, so I don't think you understand it. But just listen to the the uh, the sound of this voice. De leerkracht Nederlands is op bijscholing. Daardoor heb je vandaag het derde lesuur en het vierde lesuur vrij. Het is donderdag. Dat betekent Mark. He is telling um, you uh, you have uh, the third and the fourth hour free this today and it's market day in your place and um, go to the market and uh, see what you can do there. Um, and you have all kind of. Um, we geven geld uit vanaf het moment dat we ons You have all kind of um, uh, assessments you can do and then um, do, while doing those assessments, assessments you get a code or a part of a code um, and then uh, when you got the code i'm going to take a shortcut now um, i have to add the code here and it is this one fat bike and then i get Goed um, again audio and uh, text and explanation you've well done and this is what you have to do now so i'm here back on the market but now i'm in a 360 image um and i can go through that image this image is taken i think two months ago we created this with ai and it's um uh, it's going so quick with the developments that when we take uh, the picture now when we create the picture now it will be much better than it was then but for now it is this one so i'm going to walk around into those in the, this 360 image and hey i see something here on the uh, on the top so that I'm, is an interessante aanbieding i'm going to um, to read this and this is a um, an advertisement and i have to find the code again in this case it's this uh, code and i can always come back if i didn't see it um so I can uh, go um, to the next part. I have to see where I can go on. Oh, it's here on the floor. It is locked. And all those things, yeah, the locked uh, hotspots, uh, the audio you can add, the 360 image, the hotspot connector page, the first page, you can um, use in Xerti. It's all Xerti, so it's not um, other tools that we used. So in this case, I'm going to add the code. It was 366 and then 82. And I can go on. Je vindt zomaar een muntstuk van 2 euro op de grond. Wat heb jij geluk? Er is in de and I have to do a new puzzle. And, and I go further and further. I have to talk to the bakery. And in the end, I can buy uh, an iPhone on the market. Um, this is a, a bit how we create the, this uh, escape room. It's an educational escape room because it's based on an edu box. And the edu box is uh, for uh, students in this case from uh, secondary education that have to learn about the value of money, about uh, that you uh, see an advertisement, but the, is what you see is what you get, um, all the, those kind of things. But it is fun to do. Uh, we haven't tested it yet, but uh, we will do that uh, later. And as soon as it's tested, it will be also open, available for everyone. Uh, are there any questions till now? Not yet? Nothing in the chat, Inga. Anyone want to raise a question? So how does this compare to using H5P? Yes, H5P has also similar uh, interactivities, but H5P is more um, one page or one uh, uh, assignment. And with Xerti, you can create a whole learning path uh, and also add H5P assignments into uh, Xerti. Uh, so uh, um, uh, Xerti is a bit more uh, a bigger tool than H5P, but you can compare it. Okay, then I have a, a lot of um, different escape rooms here uh, as an example. 
So uh, this, for example, this one is an escape room in uh, a classroom. This is a teacher who created it. It was the first time, first one he created. Um, and I have no information. I am in a lo in in a um, in an, uh, a room, and I can't go out because my students lock me in. How do I get out? <laughs> Um, and I can have a different hotspots I can click on and then I can get the information I need. I also can click on this button here and then all of a sudden it's dark and it can be light again. And I know I have to be here. There's a lot of books and somewhere here with the books, I uh, there is an assignment and I can uh, find a code to get back um, to this escape room. Uh, it's in the example, so you can try to play it um, if you want. Uh, this is a one, uh, uh, it was fun and to try it out. So it's not particularly educational, but it, it, this is a, a math uh, chemistry teacher. So there are some math chemistry things in there. Uh, this is um, an escape room from Wilma Hodges from Longside, and she was here last year. And she did this escape room live with a, a bunch of people. And it's really a nice escape room. Um, and when you begin, put your audio really loud. That's nice in this escape room. <laughs> she also made a lot of use of uh, good audio to, um, uh, yeah, to make it even um, more exciting. Um, it's... Uh, um, uh, about it's for fun and it's about that you have to uh, save the world because Dr. Sakaiger is going to destroy the world and you have to ha you have an hour time to save the world in this case and the the time thing that's really nice if you add it to the to your escape room Yes, Rosemary, you uh, you did <laughs> you do this this did this yes. Um, this is one from the University of Surrey, um, and I put this one in because it's about uh, a subject. It was uh, let me see uh, because they wanted to show uh, how you can use a digital escape room, creating with uh, in a. Um, uh, a, a lab, a chemistry lab, and um, there are all kind of uh, exercises in there that, that's around chemistry. So this is more an ed educational uh, escape room. I don't know how to get out with because I didn't play it yet, but um, if you have time, please do. This is an escape room from, uh, this is an older one from Helen Goodbane uh, and uh, Shannon Kuruana. And it's an escape room uh, that was built in Padlet. And together with her, we built it in Xerti to see if that worked. And it's around um, uh, accessibility. And uh, again, there is a story because almost every escape room has a story about, in this case, saving the, the lab again because uh, he planted a bomb somewhere and you have to dismantle the bomb um, in, uh, in a short time. But during that, you get uh, all kind of assignments around uh, accessibility. Um, and so you learn about the accessibility. This is a, a linear escape room, um, and but you also can create a non-linear escape room. I, do, I have an example later for that. This is the 360 image page in Xerti. So we have 75 pages, but you can use this page also standalone. And for example, uh, I can. Uh, this is the. Uh, I can walk the newer castle, so I can see how the whole castle. I can look at the video. Um, I can also see that here is a, an icon with a, a lock. So I have to find something here in this um, 360 image that helps me to uh, go into this uh, place. Uh, I can also go from scene to scene. So this is, you have the first scene, 
and then this the scene afterwards. I'm sorry, I have to take a rest now. <laughs> um, so I can go uh, from picture to picture and walk around there and uh, go back again. Um, so this is a very good page to use as a, uh, for an uh, escape room because only with this room you can do a lot. You can add assignments, you can add videos, text, images, uh, locks, um, uh, all kind of that. I think this was the last Oh no, this one. Um, this was a, an escape box, so this was a physical one, but we created um, a digital. So you wake up. Um, I'm going to the next page. You wordt wakker en ligt op de vloer. Also with audio. Uh, this is the box, and she took pictures of the box and then added all kind of. Um, assignments into the box. So I'm in the room now and I can do different things here and I have to solve the puzzles. If I don't know the answer or I'm stuck, I can go to the, this question mark and I get a hint. But uh, I can get several hints and in the end I see how much hints I got and um, how much points I have. Um, I can go back to the, um, the map and if I have unlocked different rooms, so this is a non-linear uh, escape room, then I can see the rooms here where I can go to. In this case, I only have one. But if, I, for example, there are five rooms, if I have three rooms unlocked, I will see them here and I can go through the rooms, uh, navigate uh, via the map. Uh, this was also one for the fun. So these are a lot of examples. Uh, I will give you the link to this. Uh, we'll put it in the chat before I forget. Where's the chat here? So you can look, take a look at the examples uh, uh, later. But how do you create uh, an escape room? And uh, escape room takes a lot of work because, uh, for example, the planning before you start, uh, you have to overthink it. What is your goal? Uh, what do you want for story? What assignments do you want? What is the code? Which puzzles do you use? Uh, what's the end? Um, what do you want to let them play it in groups or uh, alone? So there are a lot of questions you have to ask yourself before you start creating the escape room. And you can do it in several ways. Um, you can just start and see where it ends. But you can also create a whole mind map or um, uh, a template and then create the uh, escape room. Uh, a lot of time is also taken by uh, where do I have the uh, images, the, which videos do I use, what the, what's the media, uh, media I can use. And it's, it's uh, good that you have them on forehand before you start building it. Um, and one of the things, or those two, uh, you can have all the puzzles in and go right away to the end, but you can also add uh, hints and distractors. So you can say, hey, this is a nice view. What should I do with it? And then in the end, you don't have to do anything with it, but they are uh, looking at it and, and remembering it. Um, and you can also add distractors for, for learning, for example. Uh, because they are looking at it at that point because they think it's useful to get out. Um, those are the pages you can use in Xerti. Now, you don't know Xerti, so I'm not going to explain them all, but uh, you can use all 75 pages, but those pages are most used in the uh, escape room. Uh, the media 360, the um, uh, the X from I is for, it's all for for the code base, but also an access base on your an access code on your 
page, it's also possible. So those are the things that are most used. But in between, so you have the code to get get on, get further. But in between, you can use everything you want. Text, images, uh, other websites, uh, other uh, modules uh, to get them engaged with the materials and get a code uh, to access the next room or um, to do something else in the escape room. Um, yeah, we talked about the whole day, so I'm not going to explain it, uh, how, what the goal for your learning object uh, for your uh, escape room is. Um, um, this is what I said, how you can distribute it. So with Zertu, you can uh, use the link, you can embed it, you can have a score package, LTI, an offline zip package, uh, and an XAPI link. So there are a lot of uh, ways uh, most learning environments can use one of these. Um, so you can always use the Zerti escape room in your learning environment. And I also add uh, some links to free uh, uh, images uh, that's usual when you are uh, looking for uh, images. And for example, the Pixit, they have a 360 panorama uh, pictures. But you can also create a picture with your own phone. Um, if your phone has the possibility to make a panorama uh, photo, a panorama picture, uh, you can also add that. So it doesn't have to be from a, um, a camera. It can also could be on your phone and you can just use anything uh, that you um, take a picture of. OK, so behind the scenes. Um, for the ones that have 30, uh, this is a download link where you can download the my example I'm going to show later, uh, and you can add it in your uh, own 30 installation. I think we are going to use our playground, and there it's already in. Uh, if you want to see the example, you can uh, click here on the uh, link, and you can see the example. Uh, but this is for later. Oh. So um, we're going to go into Zerti and create our own learning object. Let me see, we are not with more than 25 people. If you go to this link, HTTPS, Spielplatz, that's the link from our playground. Then we have uh, the username demo1 to 25. So I'm going to name your name and say the number. So for example, Anna, Anna Garner, uh, you get number one from me. So your uh, username is demo1 and then demo1demo. And then Steen or Steen Reimers, you get from me number two. So your username is demo2 and then demo2demo. I hope this is uh, uh, clear to you. So just try it. So Anna gets one, um, Stian gets uh, two, um, Pamela gets three, Christine gets four, Silas five, Yvonne two, uh, six, Michaela seven, Mike Reddy eight, Adeline Rush nine, Hamilton, uh, Josh Hamilton, 10, uh, Eric, uh, 11, uh, Aisha, uh, 12, and Mark, 13, and uh, Rosemary, uh, uh, 14. So try it out. It can be that there are other learning objects already in there because we use it with uh, other demos as well, but don't bother. So try to get in. If you can't get in, let me know. Yeah, you can put it in English uh, on the right top. I will show you uh, as soon as everyone is in. OK, most of you are in. Yeah, then I'm going to the Spielplatz. Um, this is demo four. I will take demo 15 then. You 
can use this uh, for a month after uh, this uh, session. And if you need it longer, then please let me know. Then uh, we can get, uh, let you have access to it. Uh, for example, here are already a few um, uh, demo in that someone else created. I can just uh, throw it away. And I don't think this one is mine. It's shared with someone else. Okay. Don't. Okay, this is gone also. So this is how your uh, Spielplatz looks, I hope, your playground. Then here on the right, you have templates where you can create learning objects from. In this case, we are going to use the Zerti Online Toolkit. So that is 70 different uh, pages. It's in Dutch for me, but I can put it in English here. And now um, when I... I have to put it in English before I log in, then uh, it, it will be in English. But I will create this template. And here you have a list of things you can choose. And we choose the escape room code examples. So you go to Zerti Online Toolkit, you click on default, and then you choose escape room code examples. And then you give it a name. Uh, I will give it uh, ER1. It doesn't matter what name you uh, give, it, it's only for you. And then you will create, um, I think it is in English, uh, Anna, uh, only the text is not in English. I don't know why, but, uh, but the rest is in English. And then I click on create. And here you see already a filled escape room example that we can try and change. Inga, we've got a question in the chat. Yeah. Are you looking for people to copy what you're doing just now or are you just demonstrating possibilities? Uh, both. So you can you can follow and do it in your own um, uh, playground, or you can uh, just look at it. Yeah. Are there people that want to do it, and then I do it again? Folks, if you would like to be following, if you want to give us a quick thumbs up, then we'll get a sense of if folk want to follow. Seeing a flurry of thumbs up there, Inga. So yes, I think if you can do that again, that would be appreciated. I'm sorry, I will do it again. This is the way you see your environment is. So if you look in your playground, then on the right, you have the Zerti Online Toolkit template. You click on default, and then you use uh, the uh, template escape room code examples. And you just gave it, give it a name and say create. You have, if this, this doesn't work, then maybe your pop-up blocker is uh, on. Please let me know if it worked for you. Thank you, uh, Christine. <laughs> okay. So please let me know if it works for you. And we can go on. For the ones that already uh, created this, to see what you have now, you can click play. And if I click play, there's a new pop-up, and then I can go through the example I have created now. I will explain later what it is, but uh, try to go through it. Okay, worked for me. I think we're good to move on, Inga. We've seen quite yeah. a few thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So 
uh, how Xerti works is that you have a list of um, pages here that you created. If you want to create a new page, you can click on the plus sign and you can add all these kinds, eh, 70 uh, sort uh, of pages. But in this case, you don't need to because they are already in here. And um, in the middle, it's, it's a form based tool. So you have to fill in a form uh, to, to create the learning object. And then on the right, you have all kind of extra properties you, you can use uh, that are not in the middle, but they are there. But in this case, you don't need them. So it's what we, this is what we are going to do. Um, now take a look at my screen. I'm going to show you what this example is. So you see my screen? Yeah? Yep. Okay. So I have uh, added a few of code uh, uh, examples that you can use in your escape room. And in between, you can use all kinds of other pages. Uh, this is example one, and it's the 360 image page. So if I go there, uh, I have to click. This is just an uh, image where I can uh, have to go on. So in this case, I can click on this keyhole and I'm in here and then I have a few uh, of, um, some text about uh, this escape room. So here I can add um, uh, some information. What's the goal? What do you have to achieve? Um, where it's about and maybe some things that you want them to know on forehand. Um, and then in this case, you click on start. I'm in the room now. Uh, and um, you hear something ugly is going on here. And I, I have to find some hotspots to, um, to get the code. In this case, I, I know there's one here on the, uh, on the map. There's one here. Let me see where it is. No, it's not there. It should be here, but it's not there. Uh, and I have um, a lock here. And I have to find the whole code to get out. In this case, I am uh, have to. I can escape and I know the code is escape. Um, now this is unlocked and I go and go on to the next scene and I'm out and I get um, a freedom, a gift or whatever, and I can go on to the next page. How does it, this look on the, uh, when you're creating it? So this is the office. So this is the, the, the first page. So this one. And you see here, um, it's a title page with uh, an, an image on it. It's this one. Uh, it's a, a hotspot image connector page where I added an image. And to add an image, I, I can go to my media folder that's connected to this Xerti object. And I can choose the 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 screenshot from the keyhole in this case. Just double click and it's in there. And then I have this. And then I add, and here's this little plus sign before front page. There's a little plus sign. If you click on that, there are more pages with a plus sign than, than there's something below. I can get uh, add a whole edit a hotspot. So if I click on this image, I can create a hotspot. I use this one, a polygon hotspot, so I can follow the keyhole. And then I say, OK, this is my hotspot. And I have to, uh, when they press the hotspot, they go to the instruction page. And in this case, the instruction page is the next page. But you can go to every page you want. Uh, so when you now start this escape room uh, and you want to change this, 
then you can uh, go here and instead of use the keyhole image, you can use your own image. And uh, for example, about making chocolate um, and change the hotspot, but then the whole structure is already there. So you can use that. Um, we are going to try it out later. Uh, then I go to the to the office. Uh, in this case, um, the office is also a plus. I'm going to show you that, that was this um, 360 image with a uh, wow. here, uh, um, this is the office and also uses hotspots. So I have here the image and I placed a hotspot on the map. And based on that hotspot, I get some text. Then I go to the next one, um, and that's a question. And the question is here with the, uh, I don't, garbage bin, I think it's called in English. Um, and connected to that one, there is move to a page, what's the capital of the Netherlands? And that question will be uh here what's the capital of the netherlands and you have this sign because you shouldn't see it in the in the whole list uh so this is already created for you then we have a gift and the gift will be here on this uh thing i, I think statue small statue uh and then you can escape and when you can escape that is the room uh, the window so I can I added um, a locked hotspot. That's one of the optional properties. And when I uh, I say unlock after entering the password or uh, viewing a scene or hotspot. In this case, it was entering the password. So if we go there, then we have the uh, the map. And in this. Wow. It's, uh, the E and the S are bold. Um, then you have the statue. I, I got um, a gift. So a P and an E. And then here you have the, the garbage bin. And this is, uh, for example, Amsterdam. And then I have the rest of the code. So this is the Media360. Um, I can imagine that when you are now first new to Xerti, this looks complicated. But um, as soon as you work with Xerti, this is not complicated. It's just following all the things that are in there. So um, don't get, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, disappointed that you can't use it. Um, with all tools, you have to use it first and uh, learn to use it to uh, to create it. Yeah, that's true, uh, uh, Michaela. It's a, a no-code open source solution, so you don't have to code at all. It's only following the, the, the templates and the pages. Um, I'm going further because we just have 12 minutes uh, left to the other examples. So I'm going out of the window. Let's look, here's the window. It was escape. Oh, I'm free. Okay. I go to the next example. And this is the X of I page. That's another way to add a code to your learning example, or to your escape room. In this case, I have a, uh, an image. Uh, from uh, um, night and the moon, and it's a bit scary. And I have different hotspots. This is the image connector page. So here I have a distractor, for example. Hey, how many uh, bars has this fence? You never, you have, don't have to uh, use it later. Um, here I get an, a video uh, about Halloween, and here on the left I get an audio file. And here I get the questions. If I saw the video and I get the in information, then I know it's uh, on the October uh, the 31. 
and um, it's connected to All Saints Day. Now I know the code. Uh, I don't know if any one of you saw what the code is then, to go to the next page. Or are you all asleep at this time of day when it's warm and <laughs> at the end of the day? Anyone? Almost. <laughs> what was it? Maybe it was... do you want to go through it again? To see if anyone can spot you this time. Okay, uh, let me say submit. That's not uh, wrong. I go back. So when is it Halloween? That's October 31. And it's connected to All Saints Day. Yes, it's AI. Very simple, uh, but they have to read the, um, uh, the information, otherwise they miss it. And they can go back. And in this case, well done, I can click here to continue. So this is the X of I page and the X of I page was the one where I should add, uh, could add the code. Uh, then this is the decision tree code, but uh, let me see, I will uh, go further. Um, uh, now, a decision tree you can use for all kinds of questions and they have to give answers and based on the answers uh, you can get out. So in this case, I have the answers already here, but normally you have a question and they have to answer it. I don't have an answer here, but the, uh, the order is a bird and then uh, the calf and then the horse and then the cows. And now I'm through. So uh, somewhere I got the answers and I have to fill it here in the decision tree and then in the end it will open. If you have the wrong uh, answers, it won't open. Um, and I can go through the door and go to the next page. And uh, this one is uh, added um, in the last um, uh, release of 30. And this is a really easy one to use. And I'm going to go here to my uh, example. You have the example, so you can take a look at it later. But this is the access code one. Um, I have um, here on the left, you see a page, uh, and that's uh, the access code. So I have a question, uh, how much is 2 to uh, uh, plus 11? So it's, uh, it's 13, uh, check, okay, I can go on. And in this case, this access code, it's pa uh, based on the next page. So I can go to this page only when I added the access code uh, here. Um, and this you can add to every page there is in Xerti. So, um, so what happens? I have to add 13 here and then I get access to this page. If I add, for example, um, Oh, it's only it's already now uh, open. So maybe if I refresh, so I add uh, 12 here, then I can get into that page. It says incorrect code, but you can add any text that you want want in here. And to show you how easy uh, that is, uh, I can add a page, for example, a page with text just plain text at the end uh, blah blah uh, and then i say oh i only i want to access this page when i add an access code so i add the access code so here's my text blah blah and it added this piece of uh, template now here below um, and the access code for example is xx i can change the text here. Um, so if I go to this uh, page now, 
I get the access. Uh, I have to add the ex, uh, access code. And in this case, I added XX and I can submit it and then I'm in. So you can use uh, what I showed you here, the 360 image, the um, the hotspot connector page. So that's the image with all the hotspots or the um, X from I page or the a decision tree. But you also just use the uh, access code on a page. Um, there's one thing if. Uh, and that's about um, that people can cheat. Because normally, I will show you. Uh, you see here, uh, when I go to this next page, page two, uh, if you're in a browser, you can say, oh, I, can, I can't go further. I add page three here, and then I can skip that page. And that's why we have built in uh, the functionality that you force the first page. And if I go in now, and I go to the next page, it doesn't uh, give me the possibility to skip pages and go to the next page. Uh, this is in a very short time, a lot of what you can do with 30. Um, uh, I, I, I can imagine that it's, it looks complicated, uh, but it really isn't if you, if you get the hang of it. Uh, but 30 is a really easy tool to create escape rooms with. And at the moment, we are developing, for example, a page that you can use a lock or that you can use um, all kind of tools to go to the next page. So we are still adding um, uh, functionalities to, um, uh, to uh, develop the escape rooms more and more. So I'm at the end of my talk. Um, I hope this was useful.